Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion time where we're talking about get established and rise up. We've been talking the last several days about this idea of God's covenant of love. Deuteronomy chapter 7, God says he gave the people a covenant of love, and he says he keeps his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him. And then God often talks about in the Old Testament of establishing his covenant with his people, of God is establishing his covenant with his people. We're going to take communion here in a little bit around this idea of God has established this covenant of love with us. And then over the last several days, we've been talking about this covenant of love that God has given us in the body and the blood of Jesus, this covenant of love where God has obligated himself, committed himself, bound himself in this covenant, it's a covenant commitment on his part to do good for us continually, to love us and to do good for us continually. But then we have a role to play where we have to get our hearts established in this covenant of love. Apostle Paul prays in Ephesians chapter three that the people would be rooted and established in love. We have to get our hearts established in this covenant of love And then when we get our hearts established in this covenant of love, what happens is this. Faith rises up. We begin to rise up. Faith rises up. And this light of God begins to shine on us. And how do we cross this bridge of getting God's covenant of love rooted and established in our hearts is we go through this process we've been talking about the last several days of meditation. Meditating on God's word, reciting it, rehearing it, replaying these verses over and over in our minds, especially meditating on God's steadfast love. His covenant of love for us begins to grow this and establish it in our hearts, getting it rooted and established in our hearts. And what does it mean to be established? We've been talking about to be established is to be firm, It's to be fixed. You can say it's consistent. It's steadfast. Think about, I was just talking with a client of mine who does a lot of gardening and things like that. And we're talking about what it takes to get a tree established. An established tree, and actually we're going to see it uh, in some of these verses here. An established tree, you're not worried about the wind knocking it over. You're not worried about uh, drought. You're not worried about the heat of the day burning up the tree. You're not worried about these things. These these trees are rooted. They've got a good root system. It's supported and it is established. It's strong. It's fixed. It's secure. That's this idea of being established. And we got to get established in this covenant of love with God. And when we do, what happens? Our faith rises up and it causes us to take bold, courageous steps of faith, confident steps of faith as we're trusting in God, even when the storms of life may come. So let's get started with prayer, and then we'll dive into this concept just a little bit more. But we're going to pray our prayer from our 30-day prayer challenge. If you want to learn more about this prayer, you can go to the AbundantLifeTrainingCenter.com and find the 30-day prayer challenge there. This is a prayer that is mostly scripture coming out of Ephesians chapter 1, the prayer of Jabez from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, and then some other scriptures that are uh, in there as well. And this is a prayer that I pray daily over myself, all of my family, friends, those connected to me, all of our partners. And I'm amazed constantly at how God answers this prayer consistently. I see him answering this prayer pretty much every day. It's amazing. You begin to implement this and you do the other half of prayer where you take the time to get still just even for a few minutes, get still to listen, to follow God's leading, to follow his voice and help him plan your day for the next day and stay tuned into him as you walk out this prayer each day. It's amazing where it leads you over time if you continually do this. But Heavenly Father, I just pray for all those that are watching this video, all of their families, their friends those connected to them. And I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for releasing us from the darkness. You transferred us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. And I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began and all the abundance of good things that you have done for us. And Father, I just keep asking that you, the father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand. 
far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, we ask you to bless us and to bless our time here together. Help us all to come away with practical things that we can implement along with feeling challenged and encouraged and inspired and enlightened all at the same time. And we ask you to expand our borders, expand our territory, expand our capacity to receive your purpose and your grace and all that you want to do in our lives and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. And we ask you to help our love to grow and to abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. We ask you to keep your hand on us and help us do today, this day, what's right and best in your eyes and to do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Getting established. Like I said, God's given us this covenant of love. He's established it. He's already has it in place. But we have a role to play in getting this covenant of love rooted and established in our own hearts. To get this established where it's steadfast, it's fixed, it's immovable. It's not shaken easily. It's in our hearts. And we have this covenant of love in our hearts. And I want you to think about it this way. When we have this covenant of love, when love is established in our hearts, it says perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. And I was just reading the other day, I was reading a book by Kenneth Copeland on the laws of prosperity. And I'm going through this and he's got a section in there, just so happens, on the established covenant and the established heart. And I'm reading about this and this is very much lining up with some of the things that God has been showing me lately. And I'm reading about this and he says one of the, the key passages of scripture that God had shown him about this established covenant, this established heart, was Psalms 112, Psalms 112. And so we're going to read Psalms 112 here and kind of start with there. But this gives us an idea of this established heart. What does this established heart look like? So Psalms 112, I'm going to start from the beginning. We're going to read the whole Psalm. It's not a very long one. It says, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his commands. What is the fear of the Lord? We talk about often when we take communion, every time we take communion, we do so with the fear of the Lord, which is what? Holy awe, holy reverence, respect, honor, where we are, yes, we're fearful of what life would be like if God was against us, if God was not with us in our lives, but we're fearful of not having God in our lives. We want to do what pleases him. That's the fear of the Lord who takes great delight in his commands. That's fearing the Lord. For the person who fears the Lord, here's what it says, his children will be mighty in the land. If you have children, this is a good promise that you can begin to meditate on. For those that fear the Lord, their children will be mighty in the land and the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house and his righteousness endures forever. We've been talking about this month of May. Our monthly message was wake up and strengthen the things that remain. We talked about righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus has been given to us forever, and his righteousness remains forever. Our righteousness, our right standing with God is based on what Jesus did, not on our own righteousness. And that's a righteousness that endures forever. It never changes. It remains the same at all times. We can strengthen our heart in that righteousness. We can get our heart established that Jesus makes me righteous. And then I have this covenant of love with God because of the righteousness of Jesus. So it says, even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for the gracious, compassionate, and righteous man. Even in darkness, light dawns. We're going to talk about today is the 25th of the month. And my daughter actually reminded me this morning when we got up. And actually, I was thinking about it yesterday already. We talk about often in my book, The Miracle Year. God has shown me the 25th day of the month. Christmas happens on the 25th day of the month. Hanukkah has ties into the 25th day of the month as well. And both of those have to do with light. Jesus, the light of the world, came on the 25th day of the month. Hanukkah 
God did the miraculous and make, made the light last for eight days instead of one when they only had enough olive oil for one night to light the lamps in the temple. And God has shown me the 25th of the month, light often comes. Light often comes on the 25th day of the month. And we're going to see here, we're going to talk about rising up, arise and let your light shine from Isaiah chapter 60 here in just a minute. But the 25th day of the month, light often comes. New enlightenment often comes on the 25th day of the month. You may see things that you've never seen before on the 25th day of the month. But let's get back to the psalm. So it says, even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely. We can be generous and we can lend freely because we're trusting that God's going to supply it back to us. We can be open-handed. We can be giving because we're trusting that God's backing us. He's supplying us and he will keep replenishing it faster than we can keep putting it out. Who conducts his affairs with justice. Surely he will never be shaken. We're going to be looking at this word established. He will never be shaken. The person that's established in their heart, they will not be shaken. The things that could be going on all around them, and we still do what? We still keep this covenant of love. This covenant of love that we're going to be talking about here. Getting this covenant of love established in our hearts. God's already established it. God's already established in this. Where he's established himself. He's confirmed it. I'm going to do continually good for you all the time. I'm going to love you. I'm going to give you grace and mercy and goodness and kindness all the days of your life. I'm covenanted with you to do that. And we have to get that established in our heart to do the same. It says, this person, surely he will never be shaken and a righteous man will be remembered forever. He will have no fear of bad news. Again, perfect love, getting this perfect love of the covenant established in our heart. He will have no fear of bad news. Why? Because his heart is steadfast or that word can also be translated established. Because his heart is either steadfast or established, trusting in the Lord. We got to move from this place of not only believing in God, but trusting in him. How do we know when we trust in him? When these storms of life, these bad news comes, we stay fixed. We stay consistent because we're fi fixed, fixing our minds in immovable, rooted and established in God's love. His heart is steadfast. His heart is established, trusting in the Lord. He also says here, his heart is secure. His heart is secure. Think about this strong tree that is rooted and established in the ground. His heart is secure and he will have no fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on his foes. God always causes us to triumph. He's made you to be more than a conqueror. He always gives us the victory in Christ. Therefore, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's from Corinthians. God always causes you to triumph. It might not always look like it in the present moment, but he will always cause you to triumph. Jesus says, be of good cheer. In this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And we've got to get that established in our hearts. Then it says, he is scattered abroad, his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. That passage right there, I've been meditating on 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And Paul quotes that in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, talking about this chapter on God making all grace abound to you. And then he says, he is scattered abroad, his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. His horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked man will see and be vexed. He will gnash his teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. So getting our hearts established, getting our hearts fixed and secure and trusting in God's steadfast love for us. How do we get our hearts established? We focus on God's steadfast love for us and get that rooted and established. And what does that do? That leads to us being becoming more loving to do keep this covenant of love with other people but as i was reading in this book by kenneth copeland he talks about when our heart gets established when our heart gets established in this covenant of love what happens he says the force of faith begins to rise up the force of faith begins to rise up where all of a sudden i get this covenant of love i understand we said yesterday, a house is established 
through understanding. When I understand that what God is doing for me, he's given me this covenant of love that I can have no fear because in perfect love, there is no fear. When things in life come at me, I'm established in this covenant of love where God is working for my good. Everything's going to be okay because God is with me. He loves me and he has promised, he has covenanted with me to do continually good for me and to take care of me. And when that's established, rooted and established in my heart, all of a sudden this force of faith begins to rise up and your light begins to shine. You begin to take bold, more confident steps of faith and it begins to rise up. And so let's look at this verse from Isaiah chapter 60. This is Isaiah chapter 60, starting in verse one. And this is from the Amplified Version. It says, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you, and rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Arise. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come. And some of the versions talk about the greatness of God is going to be shining upon you. God wants to make you great. He promised Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. God wants to make you great. This is not making your, you or yourself great. God wants to make you great. Arise. Think about Jesus. What did he often say? When the little girl was dead, the 12-year-old girl, he said, arise, I say to you, arise. Jesus tells the guy, arise, take up your bed and walk. Get up, arise. All of a sudden, when this covenant of love gets established in our heart, it causes us to rise up and to take some different actions. No longer are we sad and discouraged and frustrated because we realize God's with us. He's going to be helping us. He's given us this covenant of love. And now our role is to get fixed and established in that and to let it flow through us. And we got to keep our part of the covenant as well, trusting in that, trusting that God is doing that for us. And then I have a role to play in this covenant of love, of giving other people the same grace, the same love that God has given me. And it's not dependent on how they treat me. It's not dependent on how they treat me. I've committed myself. I've covenanted with God to do continually good for other people, just like God has done for me. This month in the month of May, our message, like I said, has been wake up, wake up or arise, wake up, arise, strengthen the things that remain. But in Song of Solomon, it just keeps coming to mind over and over lately. It says, do not awaken love until the proper time. Do not awaken love to the proper time. This, this word arise is in the Song of Solomon quite a bit as well. And actually this word established, if you look at the word established in Hebrew, where God says, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. One of the translations of that word established means to arise or to rise up or to stand up. So when this heart, when this covenant of love gets established in our heart, it causes us to stand up, to rise up, because God's love and his light has been shed abroad in our heart and it causes us to take some different actions in life and to love like he's loved us. So let's take communion here as we close this out today. Every time we take communion, like I said, we do it in holy awe and reverence for God and for Jesus. And communion, every time we take it, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. That the old is gone, the new has come. Wake up! and arise to a new life. The only thing that counts is a new creation. It says that through the one sacrifice of Jesus, he has made us righteous. He was made into his wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. He makes us righteous. He makes us holy. He makes us perfect. These are all found in Hebrews chapter 10, I believe. He makes us holy. He makes us righteous. He makes us purchase, or perfect through his one sacrifice through his body he did all that so we could have this covenant of love with god and get this established in our hearts and rise up to a new life heavenly father i thank you that on the night jesus was betrayed he took the bread and he said this is my body broken for you and lord i ask you to bless this bread in jesus name
Then after supper, at the last supper, on Passover, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this cup and what it represents, this covenant of love. Let me ask you to bless this cup, Lord. And Father, Jesus said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, this covenant of love. He says, pour it out for the forgiveness of sins, pour it out for many. Father, we just thank you for this cup. May I ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Every time we take communion, it's like an activator, activation. It's this reminder, let go of the old, rise up getting this covenant of love god's already established it with us we have a role to play in getting it fixed and firm and steadfast and established in our hearts and then this communion is a reminder to rise up to step into this new life to step into this new life that god that jesus paid for that he bought for us it's a reminder of this activation in our lives that we're supposed to go forward from this different Communion is a table turner. It turns the tables and it changes the trajectory of our lives. I believe if you'll take communion regularly and you'll focus on these concepts that we're talking about with communion, they will truly change the trajectory of your life. But I hope this has been a blessing to you. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with us, you can go to the AbundantLifeTrainingCenter.com.